Hi, so as you can see, we are not in Daphne today. We are in our lovely little house in Sydney. It's pretty freezing here. So we started reminiscing about our trip to Cairns that we did mm. at Christmas and thought we would do a little recap. Yeah, so we didn't actually record it like a vlog at the time. I think it didn't really occur to us to do something like this, but we got a load of footage and pictures. So we thought we'd talk about it here and sort of paint the picture with a few of the videos that we took. So we did Cape Trip and back in 15 days. So another- 5,000 kilometers, approximately 5,000 kilometers in total. So another quick trip with a hell of a lot of driving. Yeah, um, but. A lot. So our first point, the first place where we stopped being Poms in Australia, of course, was Byron. Yeah, good old trusty Byron. We love Byron. <laughs> we do, and we've been to Byron quite a lot of times, so it wasn't really a like destination point for us. It was mainly because we knew we had to cross the Queensland border um, the next day, and this was obviously December 2021, so it was when the borders had just opened to Queensland again, and you didn't have to quarantine or anything from Sydney, but we had heard that there were a lot of delays, and so. Queues crossed. Yeah, we wanted to get as close to the border as we could so that we had a head start the next morning, which we actually didn't need. <laughs> no, we didn't. It was drive through pretty easily. Not a problem at all. But Byron, yeah, we stayed in Byron Bay Tourist Park campsite. It seemed quite popular. I think a lot of people were stopping over to get to Queensland. It was all right, wasn't it? It was. It's, um, I would say, it's, it's not really Byron, is it? No, so it's a little bit outside of, it's not in the center of Byron, but like we said, because we've done Byron quite a few times, it didn't really fuss us that it wasn't in the center. I think if you were to stay in this campsite to visit Byron Bay, you would definitely need either bikes or... Um, People were doing it on bikes, you can bike into Byron Bay town. It's probably about only five minutes in the car to Byron, sort of the main area where all the restaurants and bars and stuff are. Or if you've got a um, standalone camper and a car, then it's a really good place to stay. So that was the first night. The next morning, we got up early-ish, heading for Sunshine Beach, which is where Ash and Dave, our friends, live. Because we knew we were traveling basically past their house, we wanted to have at least one night hanging with them. Nice area. Such a nice area. Very nice area to live. Nice houses. Um, we went to the beach there. I obviously went for a dip, which is... As soon as we got there. The weather wasn't great. So you've <laughs> probably seen the videos, uh, but it was it just... It doesn't stop him. <laughs> it's such a nice area. Set off pretty early the next morning. It was night... Like it was our, probably our luxurious night because we stayed in their house. Daphne stayed obviously on the driveway, then set off from there to Agnes Waters. 15 minutes later. Bundaberg. So obviously we had to stop at Bundaberg because Matt has spent many an evening with friends drinking Bundaberg I got rum. Fully integrated into Australian culture with Bundaberg rum. So yeah, we went to the factory there. Bundaberg rum is made from all the surrounding sugarcane that you will no doubt spend hours upon hours driving through as you drive through the the east coast of Queensland. The factory tours weren't actually going, so we couldn't tell you how they were, but the the sort of um, souvenir slash shop that they have there. Yeah. And they had like a little bar as well, so you could order of drinks course. and sit down, have a few rums. Uh, but it was good, wasn't it? It was. I think, did I have a, co a coffee liqueur or something? So, uh, I feel like we had a, a yeah, maybe. Chocolatey thing. Yeah. And I bought some Christmas pudding rum beer, which was the most god-awful thing <laughs> so I've ever drunk in my bad. life. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. But obviously, Bundaberg, just stick to rum there. Don't get beer and you'll be all right. But that was a good stop. And then we headed for Agnes Water. We did. Agnes Waters is... It's about, um, it's about five hours from... Yeah. Four and a half, five hours from... Sun, Sunshine Beach. Yeah, it was really nice. That was our first NRMA campsite experience. It was such a good, like in hindsight, I would say it's our 
favorite NRMA. Yeah. I think sure. it, we started in a really nice one. So the campsite's directly on the beach. It just meant that we could wake up in the morning, literally throw our swimmers on, have a cup of coffee and get straight into the water, which we both were very grateful for. I would say Agnes Waters is more it's more wavy it's more like beach whereas the 1770 beach which is pretty much in the same area as agnes waters is more i think the surrounding area is nice to look at but as a beach it's not not that great if you ask me not for someone who likes waves and jumping around and yeah and the beach there's not much sand the sand is a bit meh um but as far as an area, yeah, it was really cool. And obviously there's some history to the place. 1770 Beach is um, obviously where supposedly the first um, ship landing was by, I'm going to butcher it now. It is Captain Cook. It is Captain Cook. <laughs> So unfortunately, he landed on a crap beach. Um, <laughs> but for a day trip, or I'd say maybe half a day, you could spend in 1770. There's a few restaurants there. You could go for a walk around. There's a little bit to do with that on that front, but take But Ag we preferred Agnes, which 100%. we're really happy that we stayed around Agnes Waters. It was really nice. We could walk, we walked from the campsite to the town in like five minutes mm -hmm. and was good for us because we were able to get some beers um, and Matt found some very suspicious looking vegan tinned meat. That was truly awful. It was. We don't need to go through that again. <laughs> we really loved Agnes and um, the NRMA there was really good fun. We then made our way to Early Beach, which that was a long day's drive. So yeah, going through Mackay was eight hours drive, and yeah, that was it was it was a long drive. It's not that interesting. The, like there's some even when, we, even when we were looking at what to do between Agnes Water and Early Beach. There's nothing. There's nothing, really. You don't really need to stop anywhere in between unless you're very interested in sugarcane like myself. Which um, we obviously then had to get. Lots of footage of the sugarcane and I think the novelty, even for you, wore off. <laughs> There's just so much sugarcane. The scenery is very generic, very repetitive. Pack some good conversation and some banging tunes and uh, you'll have a good trip. We landed in early, pretty uh, sort of late afternoon, wasn't it? It was sort of dusky mm. when we got there because um, I just remember being very concerned about us potentially hitting kangaroos. It was actually New Year's Eve by the, when we got to Early Beach mm -hmm. and we had booked three days in Early, but the campsite that we stayed at at Early, I think- NRMA, you. They had a three night minimum stay, so we just decided that we might as well do the three nights there and I for one am so glad that we were forced to spend three nights there. Oh, it was incredible. Early Beach itself, we so obviously the time of year we went was stinger season, so you actually can't go in the water. Oh, yeah. um, so there is a lagoon, a man-made lagoon within Early Beach, which was just absolutely heaving with children and... If you like swimming in children's wee. Yeah. <laughs> we're, it's just not our thing. We're not really sort of like lagoon or like swimming pool kinds of people. So for us, actual early beach didn't like have much to offer but what we did do is we actually went off on a sailboat for the day around the Whitsundays nice. Islands and that was just the most incredible thing. It was a full day as well wasn't it? It really was. So, um, And it wasn't like it, it wasn't like a cruise kind of vibe it was literally a sailboat and it was pretty like rough and ready but in a good way like you, it was felt like authentic didn't it and we'll insert here the company that we did it with because neither of us can remember that off the top of our head nope. but shout out to them as well because um they so we ate and drank on the sailboat all day and i had written saying that i was a vegan and they provided full vegan food for me spe like specially which i wasn't really expect you were very dubious of that i would say the vegan food was even better than the non-vegan food so they don't provide the alcohol you have to bring your own alcohol but there's not much of a limit is there so no it was just it was a party boat with snorkeling um i would recommend bringing your own snorkeling gear because their gear was a little bit meh and also don't have a moustache because obviously water gets through there so or if you do have a moustache put vaseline on it yeah because that top tip watertight but that was a great day a really good day we actually walked into early from the campsite it's a pretty long walk we walked in for the day did like went round the lagoon 
uh, checked out the beaches that we couldn't swim in and then we thought we'd get some alcohol and just head back to the campsite. After 45 minutes of walking back just before we enter the campsite <laughs> and carried drops, all my alcohol and splits a few cans to which I then have to consume on the road, which was just, ah, oh, it's just one of those Classic. <laughs> classic and hard moment, but a good memory nonetheless. The unpowered part of the campsite, I would say is more like the party area. It's definitely <laughs> people just coming of age, wanting to escape and start drinking. And then the powered sites were the established caravanners with full setups. Our fridge did stop on that. So I think that was three days and the- Three days fridge did like our second battery in the back did run out by that point that is three days with lights with the fan running with all our um phones being charged everything like that which i think was pretty good to be honest yeah i like so do i i just we from that point onwards knew that we needed to turn her on a little bit more. Yeah, we could have stayed a few more days. I think. I had a hundred percent of stays Easily, longer. Easily, there was more to do, but we then were making our way to Cairns. Cairns was kind of our unofficial goal or target of this trip, wasn't it? Yeah. Which I guess well, it was for me, but for you, not really. Yeah. <laughs> So I was really excited about getting to Cairns. Cairns isn't a bad place, but it's just another city, to be honest. And I don't know what I was expecting, but I think it was more like a tropical resort kind of vibe. Perhaps the pom in me and wishful thinking coming into play there. Cairns. It, do you know what? It was hot. It was nice weather. The We did the um, sky rail, which I would highly recommend. That was amazing. That was a good day. Literally walking all the way through the rainforest in the sky rail, seeing over the top of everything. So that was beautiful and we had a really fun day doing that. I think that was the other thing. Because of the time of year that we went and obviously because of the Omnicom breakout, a lot of things were closed. I really wanted to bungee jump because I've never bungee jumped before. Matt did not want to bungee jump. Not my jam. <laughs> no, I think maybe we would have found more things to do in Cairns at a different time of year or obviously without all the closures and stuff going on. I think there's more to do in the city. There's probably some nooks and crannies that if we wanted to investigate a bit more we could have done but we're only there for two nights. Well we cut it short because we went to Daintree for longer. True. I think that's the other thing to sort of note. We're not really, we don't go to these places for the like bars or restaurants or city scenes. Like we really are there to explore nature and like national parks, rainforests, beach. If it feels like something we've already seen, we won't spend much time there. Yeah. And that's, I think, the summary of Cairns. It felt, it doesn't, didn't feel like anything new. And that's not to say it's a bad place. It just felt like we'd done something like this before. Also, obviously we stayed at an NRMA holiday park. Again, very good. We actually, uh, this is our first en suite. And what a game changer. <laughs> I mean, it's only $20 extra a night. Sometimes you just don't want to have to wait to go for a poo. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we cut a day or half a day, I'd say, sure, and we went to Port Douglas. What a place. We uh, wish we'd have spent more time in Port Douglas. Port Douglas. Now that was, that did feel like something new. And also the drive from Cairns to Port Douglas. Best part. Honestly insane. I feel like going to Port Douglas, it's worth it just for that trip in between Cairns and, and Port Douglas. So. It was really nice. We had a beautiful lunch um, on the water in Port it's Douglas. The, I think a place called the Tin Shed. Highly recommend that. Also mm. great vegan food, which I was shocked at how much vegan food I got that far up. And then we hopped on the little, is it a ferry? The little crossing into the Daintree. Would you oh, call it a ferry? There's like a little, a little like float. <laughs> it's just yeah, a, a, a river crossing, which is a boat attached to some cables that's pulling you from one end to the other. Then we were officially in the Daintree Rainforest, mm -hmm. which I think for both of us was 100% the highlight of this entire trip. Absolutely. I don't know what I was expecting, but it was more than what I was expecting. So. I could I could stay in the Daintree for like a week, mm -hmm. probably longer. Yeah. The campsite itself, I think was called the Safari Lodge, but it's, so if you were to search for Turtle Rock Cafe, Safari Lodge, Ocean Safari, anything like that, that's where we stayed. One of the 
things that I loved most about staying around Daintree and Cape Tribulation is that the majority of the campsites are completely off the grid. It is probably one of the places where we found more restrictions on things like shower times, like there are timers and stuff on the showers to obviously not waste. There's timers on the lights as well. So like almost every time I'd be having a shower and within two minutes the lights would turn off. Why are you having off, a shower? And I'd be like <laughs> naked running across trying to switch the lights back on. <laughs> Obviously there were Like the no little sloth meme. We weren't able to do the ocean safari. So we ended up exploring ourselves and it probably was... Better. Better, yeah. yeah. We saw all the creeks, all the beaches, and it was just, yeah, a stunning place. I think also because obviously we had done snorkeling around the um, reef in the Whitsundays on the sailboat tour. It wasn't as though we hadn't had that experience of snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef. So it didn't feel like we were missing out because we'd already kind of experienced that. To actually be able to go the other way and explore inland with all the rainforest and all the water holes and creeks, I think was, yeah, far more exciting for us. Mm -hmm. We spent a whole day going through everything. Yeah. It was amazing. I would recommend Daintree and Cape Tribulation to anyone who wants to. For me, I feel like that's like what I thought Australia was like. Really? Yeah, like rainforests that open up onto the sea. Yeah, okay. I say for me, Australia is Uluru. Yeah, well that's why we've done both now. <laughs> yeah, true. Once we'd finished Daintree, it was kind of heading home from that point on. So Daintree was as far north as we were going to go mm -hmm. with the time that we had. From Daintree was my choice of stopover, which was a place called um, the Paluma Range National Park. And it was free camping, mate. Free camping, which is what drew me to it. So it was great, wasn't it? <laughs> no. No, it was god awful. We arrived late at night, which was a problem. There were mosquitoes everywhere. We didn't have time to set up everything and like we protect ended up, ourselves. We ended up having to eat in Daphne and not cook anything and just eat basically snacks that we had and I did not, from getting there to leaving there, I did not leave the van. But the main reason that we went there was there were some waterfalls, yes, weren't there? Yes, which were worth it. That to me made it worth it. Yeah, totally. It was epic. It was just like perfect morning, really hot sunny morning and we just, I, I had a wash in the waterfall and yeah, it was stunning. After that, we made our way to... Yapoon. So we'd booked where we were gonna stay in Yapoon, which was the beachside caravan park. We phoned and let them know that we were going to be arriving at around 6 p.m. and they said that was too late, so we had to forfeit our booking there, which was slightly disappointing. But we ended up heading to another NRMA, trusty NRMA came back to save us. So it was a really nice one as always. The rest of the way home were just sort of whistle stops. So we literally got there, stayed overnight, woke up the next morning, left, carried on going, and then we got hit by the floods. So we ended up parking up on the side of the road, met a lovely couple, which we had a lovely night with. Complete spontaneous, but that's one of the things I love about traveling is you meet. They were so nice, and mm. the four of us were sort of all in the same boat. We were all trying to get to Rainbow Beach. I think they ended up getting there the next day, but we were on well, our- they had a Land Rover 4x4 off-road. We had Daphne, <laughs> so there was no <laughs> way. It was great. And then back to Byron from there. One last night in Byron, and then on to Sydney. The way we tend to do the trips is very much see everything on the way there and then just get home as quickly as possible so that we had the most time in our destination spots. So that was our trip from Sydney to Cairns and back again. Would you recommend it? I would a million percent recommend it. Traveling up the East Coast, I think if you're visiting Australia or even if you live in Australia, traveling up the East Coast is just one of the must to like must do sites Yes. of Australia. I think there is so much to see. There's so much wildlife. So much variety as well. So yeah. much variety. Unlike Sydney to Uluru, which is fairly monotonous, it's epic but monotonous, but along the coast, you just get that variety, different towns, different landscapes. I mean, apart from the sugar cane, it was amazing. That's the end of that. Where to next? Somewhere warm. I'm freezing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in it. Bye.